The coronavirus pandemic is dramatically affecting everybody, including us here at CBS News. Last month, CBS News foreign correspondent Seth Doan told us about testing positive for coronavirus. He was quarantined in Rome with his husband, Andrea. Well, we're very happy to tell you that Seth is feeling better. He just got his second negative test result. Yay. He joins us now from his home in Rome. Seth, it is so good to see you. You know, we've talked to many people who have different reactions to this virus. I've heard people say it was aching like they've never felt. They were hit by a truck, shakes and sweats. Other people say I took some Tylenol and I went to bed. What was your experience like and what does feeling better mean for you? Well, Gail, feeling better is a relief. I've never wanted to fail a test. Never been so happy for a negative result yeah. as I just got a couple of hours ago. I was somewhere in the middle on that scale. I certainly had symptoms. I had congestion. I had aches. I had fever for one night. I'd say maybe for eight days I didn't feel very well. I had these kind of different pains in places I wasn't really used to. I, I definitely knew I was sick, but I didn't have days where I just couldn't get out of bed. I, I, was, I was lucky to have relatively mild symptoms. And then to test negative, finally, twice, oh, such a relief. Why did you have to have two tests? Is that how it works in Rome? You have to have two to end quarantine? The Italians say they follow World Health guidelines, World Health Organization guidelines that say you need two negative tests separated by 24 hours to be officially freed from quarantine. So as soon as I was exposed to people who were known to be positive, the doctor said you have to be in quarantine. Then I had the test. It turned out I was positive. We stayed in, in quarantine. Today is day 41. 41 days in the house. I've only been out for about three hours, and that was with the doctor's permission to go to some mobile clinics to have this test. And, and one of the tests, about 20 days after I first tested positive, was positive again. At that point, I had no symptoms. I was feeling much better, and I was surprised, shocked, and saddened, really, to, to test positive again, frustrated to test positive again. Yeah, that's what's so scary, to test and have no symptoms. Yes. Three hours outside in yeah, springtime and, and it turned in out that we is not a lot. Yeah. Uh, what have you been doing uh, to stay sane? Uh, Zoom. <laughs> Zoom everything. Zoom exercise. Zoom Italian classes. Zoom conference calls for work, as you guys know. Uh, Zoom dinner parties and drinks. We, in fact, to change it up at one point, put on a black tie to have a black tie Zoom dinner party because just the regular Zoom dinner party was getting old after so many weeks. But I'd say the support of family and friends, my husband Andrea has been incredible through this. I brought this into his life and he too had to be quarantined the whole time. We've been really lucky to have neighbors delivering groceries and helping us out because we couldn't leave. So uh, happy to get these test results this morning. And so, Seth, uh, speaking of your neighbors and the, and the broader situation there in Italy, one of the harder hit countries, uh, from your vantage point, I guess, opening up your window and then covering this through the computer and virtually, what's the situation there in Italy and, and what's the prognosis going forward? We live right in the middle of Rome, and with the windows open here for the last 40 days, it has sounded more like the countryside. You hear birds and insects. Though recently, I have heard more helicopters. I was doing the laundry and hanging up the laundry, and a drone buzzed right overhead. The Italians have been cracking down, trying to enforce these stay-at-home orders. On those two times that we were allowed out of the house, three times actually, to take a test, we're only out for a, a, a little bit of time. We went to this mobile clinic, but we saw all sorts of, of uh, police blockades, roadblocks where they would stop. We had a doctor's permission that we had to show that allowed us to be on the streets. The people that we've seen, Rome seems to be taking uh, this very seriously. And now, as you know, Italy is experimenting with this uh, so-called phase two, starting to open up the country a little bit more to allow some more freedom. Right now, with my freedom, pretty much all I can do is go to the grocery store and take out the trash. But after 41 days, that's pretty nice. I'll bet it's fun to take out the dress, the trash. Before you go quickly, is Andrea okay? <laughs> Andrea's great. Thanks, Gail. He actually tested negative okay. all three okay. times. There are some different hypotheses, to, hypotheses okay. there. One is that he could have had it in between and just not been tested at that right moment. But. 
He's well. I'm glad he's all right. Thank you, Seth Doan. Our chief medical correspondent, you know him, that's Dr. John LaPook, joins us. But, John, here's a question. How long can the coronavirus live inside the body? I mean, it's so interesting that Seth had no symptoms yet tested positive. Yeah, and I have to say that it shows you the perspective this pandemic gives us, that Seth is thrilled to take out the garbage. I just love that. Yeah, I know. Um, I yeah, know. but, you know, yeah. he, here, here's the thing. Just because he tested positive and that there was the virus little particles of RNA in the back of his throat, it doesn't mean that those particles were infectious. And, in fact, some research recently suggests that it probably wasn't. There was a study where... The particles were able to be recovered from the back of the throat weeks later, weeks after the person became sick, but they weren't infectious after day eight. So that's one of the things, you know, the CDC has two different guidelines. One says um, that you're ready to go back if you have 72 hours without fever, uh, in, in, assuming you have no medicine to lower the fever, you're feeling better, and that it's been at least seven days since your symptoms began. The other is the one that Seth has been following, which says you have to have two negative tests at least 24 hours apart. If he had done the first uh, criteria, he would have been out weeks ago. Yeah, how long should you quarantine if you test positive? Well, that's the thing. There are these two different ways. Uh, you could split the difference and say, well, seven days from the beginning of symptoms, if you don't have the virus, you know, maybe that's a little bit short, you know, we're trying to get people back. Um, some people I know uh, are doubling that. Uh, it's hard to know right now because we don't have the data. So some people are saying at least 14 days. Uh, the CDC official guidelines, we said there are two different ones. If you don't have the testing ability, then they're saying seven days from the beginning of symptoms, 72 hours without fever and feeling better. I have to add about Seth that uh, I have to applaud him and his ethics. When he found out that he w tested positive, he contacted everybody who he had any contact with, um, including me. That's one of the reasons why I was in self-imposed uh, uh, quarantine for a couple of weeks. It, thank God I, I tested negative. But, you know, there's a stigma attached to it. He was the very first one uh, among the first people uh, to be infected at, um, you know, around here. And uh, I thought it took a lot of guts and a lot of uh, ethics for him to go out and be so forward and say, it's me, I tested positive, there's no shame in it, and uh, I really applaud him. I, I, I got to hand it to him, and I think it's very important medically. I don't know why there is shame, but there, every time there's, a, there's an epidemic of anything, whether it's Ebola or whatever, the people who got infected, there was stigma. There should not be any stigma attached to them. I second what you're saying about Seth. It's so important that people speak out and reduce the stigma so we can all get help and get treatment if we need it. Thank you, Dr. John LaPook. Good to see you.